stood in a large church not long before I came out of China, way at the back, because there standing along the front were a row of people. And that governor's father, an old man with a little white beard and his lovely white hair, beside him this pompous, well-educated, fine-looking Chinese gentleman, the governor of the prison. But standing beside him uh, was a burglar. He's got saved, though, and they have now just come through the waters of baptism, and they're standing in front of a great congregation uh, to give their testimonies. I believe that the seed of what happened there started away, away back, 30 odd years before, when young people out on the street saw a little girl coming along, and they said, would you like to come to a meeting? And they hauled in Gladys Aylward. And Gladys Aylward found herself sitting in a church, a place she said she'd never go in. And in the church she found Jesus Christ. The years had gone, and the fish were caught. They were made into Christ's disciples because, you see, he gives you power. He says, the power of heaven is mine, and I give it to you. The power of earth's mine, I also give that to you. Would you go back to your home, back to your church, back to that fellowship group, back to that job that you're not very fond of, really, about uh, where, it's, where God has put you, or somewhere where God is going to ask you to go tonight? You know, when I went to China, I had never seen a Chinese person. I didn't even know where China was. To me, it was just a black dot on the map somewhere. And I'm afraid I had a terrific shock when I got there to find how large it was. I only knew that little green island of England. And now before me stretched that great, huge, wonderful and beautiful land with its teeming millions of aching, hungry hearts. I truly believe he asked me to go. You see, one day he walked along across my path and he said, come. And I went. And he said, you can't do anything, you know. I'll do it through you. And I remember going home when I felt God was calling me to China and saying to my father, you know, Dad, I would like to go to China. And my father rather a silent sort of man, but very straight, and he sat there and he said, and what do you think you're going to do? I said, I don't know. Well, you're not a nurse, are you? No, I'm not. Well, you can't nurse anybody. No, I said, no, I can't. Oh, well, you can't teach anything, can you? No, I said, I can't. And then he suddenly swung round and he looked at me and said, oh, go on, get out, he said. All you can do is talk. And I remember uh, turning back and going out aside the kitchen door and standing in that little passage at the bottom of the stairs and, uh, well, having a little weep. He didn't understand, bless him, because, you see, God hadn't called him. He called me. And then, suddenly, in the middle of my tears, there came this. Well, isn't that it? And so, standing there, I said, Oh, Lord. Well, he said, talk. Well, all right then, I'll talk. And I'll talk, and I'll talk, and I'll talk, and I'll talk. <laughs> and I'll just keep on talking, but it will be for you. Nobody, least of all my dear father, dreamed of how true his words were going to become. For almost from that very moment, God put words into my mouth. And I talked solidly ever since. <laughs> and 
and uh, I wondered why God had sent me. Sitting one day, I listened to the conversation of two men, and I understood that the largest place in the center of the city without the gospel was the prison. And uh, so, several days later, I went uh, to see if I couldn't get in. Well, I got in, and the Lord did some very amazing things. Uh, there was a young man in this prison uh, who uh, was a murderer. He hadn't been executed simply because he was uh, too young. Very disgruntled, very unhappy. The next day, he got involved in a fight in the prison, and the guards rushed in in the afternoon and found him in the middle of the fight, sitting on another prisoner's chest. Uh, so the guards hauled him out, they beat him, and they chained him up. And he was more miserable than ever. I didn't know anything about this until several days later, going in, there were all the men uh, sitting in this room for the Bible study. In front was standing a student. And I came along and I said to the student, well, you just uh, uh, teach them to sing a chorus and I will go and see about uh, the other men getting out. And as I was coming back, listening to those men sitting in that room singing, he breaks every fetter, he breaks every fetter. Round the corner, clink a clank, clink a clank, came poor John Wilkins. He could hardly move. He was chained all up. And I said, Oh, God, what on earth has happened? And he sunk down on the ground and burst into tears. And he said, Oh, I've just been having a few words with another man. And I said, You had more than a few words. Um, and I eventually got out of him that he was found sitting on his chest. Uh, but I said, I, I don't know. I, I'm terribly disappointed. You know, because, Gorkhan, I really thought you were going to love the Lord. No, he said, I don't want anything to do with him. He said, I don't believe there's any no God. He said, look at me. Can't move an inch. And then all of a sudden, he got up. And starting to walk along, he made towards the room where the men were singing, he breaks every fetter. The poor university student who had never seen anything like this before nearly fainted. And he gave one big gasp, and he said, Stop! Stop! We can't sing that. We're going to sing, I need Jesus. And so right in the middle of the chorus, uh, those men stopped, and they started off, Wario Yesu! Wario Yesu! And poor Wakan, he was overwhelmed, and he looked up at me and he said, I need Jesus. Will you pray for me? And sitting outside, listening to the men, still singing their chorus, John Guafan met the Lord Jesus Christ. We got up and I went in and I said to those men, now we're going to say a prayer. Now we're going to pray that John Guafan's chains will come off, but they will come off in such a way that not only you will know, or me, the whole of the prison, the whole of the city, and God will be glorified. We prayed that prayer, and I went home. Two nights later, a John Wakan, still chained up, and ha having terrible difficulty to sleep because it was uncomfortable with all these uh, heavy things on him, was lying in bed. And as he lay, he said, I suddenly saw... In the corner of the room, a bright light. It was so bright, it just shook me. I had never seen anything like it before. And I looked and I looked, and I discovered it was the form of someone. And so I lifted my head and my eyes higher, and then I saw the face. And I said, Oh, Lord Jesus, and it's you. And the Lord Jesus said, 
Yes, it's me. <coughs> and I just wanted to look and look and look. He was so wonderful. Then he looked at me and he said, Dangwakon, get up and follow me. And so he swung round on uh, to the edge of the bed and with his feet hanging over, he uh, sought to struggle to get up. And as he was struggling, the form moved from the corner and came out through the middle of that filthy cell. And uh, as he sat, brushed past him. And he said, as he br his clothes brushed past my legs, there was a most wonderful fragrance. It was wonderful. And I was just overwhelmed with that wonderful scent. And while I was just uh, taking this in, he passed me. And uh, then the other men in the cell, or six in a cell, they woke up. And he said, all men, get up quick. The Lord Jesus Christ is in this cell. And the men woke up uh, to watch this bright light disappear uh, through the wall. Uh, the guard outside heard the noise of the men getting up and banging because now it was quite dark. The light had gone. And he threw open the door, and the first person he grabbed was, of course, John Wakwa. And he hauled him out, and he dragged him down the corridor. When he got into the middle of the corridor, John Wakwa said, Oh, he said, look. And there in his hands were the chains. He was holding them, pulling them along behind him. And the guard simply shook, and he said, Oh, how did he get off? The Lord Jesus Christ took them off. Oh, well then, you better go back and don't say anything till the morning, and then I will report that I unlocked them in mistake. And so he, he pushed him back, chains and all. But the next morning they faced a terrific problem in that the key to unlock those chains hung on the wall of the governor's office. And so it went from this wall down to that guard, from that guard to the head guard, who found himself standing in the governor's office. And presently, John Kwan found himself standing in the governor's office, holding a bundle of chains in his hand. And the governor said, how did they come up? Jesus Christ took them up. Oh, put them on the table. I saw them lying on the table, still locked up. And over the table when I got there was the governor. And he said, you know, this is extraordinary, isn't it? No, I said, it isn't. It's just the Lord Jesus. Uh, we prayed, you know, uh, that he would do this. You didn't unlock them, did you? No. Where's the key? Behind my back. Will you prove it? Yes, I will. But he said, you know, I want to do something because the men tell me there is a wonderful fragrance in that cell and I am very anxious to smell it. Uh, but he said, you see, it would be very difficult for me to go up there just to smell that smell, wouldn't it? Uh, well, I said, I think you could have a sort of routine uh, uh, sort of examination and just, I'll come along with you because I would like to smell it too. And uh, so we went. And there in that filthy cell was the fragrance of Jesus Christ. And Jesus going towards them said, Come. And they came. What for? that the fetters of, the, of sin might be broken, that men might be free. Catch fish. And Jesus now says, as you've caught fish, would you catch 
ਮੈਂ